Hi everybody. So there have been records of vertical axis wind turbines as far back as the 9th century Persia or even the 7th century BC if you consider the Afghan highlands. And these were really pretty primitive devices. They were drag based devices where you basically covered up one side and the wind hit it and pushed it round. The far more efficient aerodynamic lift-based VAWT was invented by Georges Darius in France as late as the 1920s and he patented both his egg beater type and a straight bladed VAWT called the H-Rotor. Now Darius himself built a number of both curved and straight bladed small scale models but the first power producing aerodynamic lift based VAWT was constructed by Jean-Baptiste Morel who in the 1950s built a number of straight bladed turbines ranging up to 7 kilowatts in southern France. Throughout the 70s and 80s, various utility scale turbines were built, with the North American continent focusing on the egg beater type and the Europeans focusing on the hedge rotor type. Unfortunately, in a Darius type turbine, the blades have a habit of twisting in the wind and this leads to blade fatigue and subsequent catastrophic failure. The DAF turbine on Prince Edward Island fell to the ground after blade failure in 1985. In 1981, the Alcoa 500 kilowatt turbines located in San Giorgino Pass collapsed. After a power outage resulted in rotor over speeding and the blades breaking loose, they shattered and flew for a distance of 300 meters with the rest of the turbine falling to the ground. In 1986, the Flowwind 19 had a catastrophic failure that threw a blade right through the measurement trailer. In England, it was a similar story. At Carmarthen Bay in 1986, the 500 kilowatt prototype there experienced several failures linked to the power transmission and ultimately the devastating failure of one of its fiberglass blades. So the VAWTs at utility scale at least quickly established themselves as as being prone to failure, difficult to construct, difficult to maintain, and of low efficiency. Now you might wonder, given the litany of disaster that surrounds the development of VAWTs, why on earth do people keep persisting with them? Well, there's a reason, and the reason is there's a problem with HAWTs. It's a very serious problem, nobody's admitting to it, and they're quietly working on VAWTs in the hope of overcoming the problem with HAWTs. The first point is really economic. Until about 2025, the current cost of production per megawatt hour of electricity using wind turbines is $122. By 2040, it's expected to drop to around about $85 per megawatt hour. By comparison, fuel-powered electric generators produce a megawatt hour in the region of $38. What this means is that if the cost of wind energy doesn't drop below $50 per megawatt hour, it's going to fail to become competitive. Right now, all projects are being implemented with government subsidies for the sake of decarbonisation targets. But in the long run, making successful businesses out of them isn't looking particularly good. The second point is really in the nature of the turbine itself. They've really reached the physical limits of the materials that they're being made from and no further technologies of scale are expected. And to get a sense of that, then if we look at the turbine, it is monolithic. For a 6 megawatt plant, you need something in the region of 700 tonnes of steel and 5,000 tonnes of concrete. Every year, the efficiency of a wind turbine installation decreases by an average of 4.5%, which means after 10 years, they're producing about half as much energy. And the probability of failure and breakdown also grows. After 8 years, the probability is 80% that something will fail. Because the main working structure is so high up, the cost of maintenance and replacement is very expensive. And what this all adds up to is a desperate search for an alternative before the jig is up. Now with VAWTs they were abandoned quite early, so there's a lot of scope that doesn't exist in HAWTs for advancement of this technology. And of course, there's a lot of research going on, but two things have happened recently. One is that that research has now moved forward into trial plants, and the second is the discovery that VLWTs are far more efficient than we actually thought. 
So this is the C12. It was launched as a prototype, the S1, in 2015, and it was a 30 kilowatt prototype to see how it went, and it withstood storms and hurricanes. So now they're launching a 1 megawatt prototype for a five-year trial, and the expectation is that this will bring it below the magic number of $50 per megawatt hour that will make this a viable thing. To my mind, what it shows is that with better design and engineering, VAWTs can compete with HAWTs, and they were just abandoned too early. And they carry with them the benefits of being smaller, cheaper, and more robust. Of course, C12 is just one example of the progress of VAWTs, and there are many more. The significant thing about C12 is it's perhaps the first one that's gone into a prototype and then onto a test field where it's showing that it can do something that HAWTs just can't, and that is produce electricity that is competitive with current fuels, and that is truly astounding. Now, if you couple that with this, it's a research paper showing what happens when you put two or more VAWTs together. Now, all wind turbines give off turbulence, but with the HAWT, you have to spread them apart because the turbulence of one will interfere with the production of another. With a VAWT, turns out the turbulence supports each of the generators, giving an astounding 15% improvement in efficiency. Now, this is game-changing stuff. It's, it's completely counterintuitive, and of course, it's caused a great deal of excitement, and there's a great deal of research going into this, because instead of spreading them out like you have to do with HAWTs, cram them a bit closer together, you get a much denser area of production that's able to extract much more of the wind and give you an improvement in the performance. It's truly astounding. So if you put those two things together, we've got an improvement of engineering and design that is getting below that magical $50 per megawatt hour. We've got a realization that you'll get support of one and the other, and our thought about what the efficiency was of a VAWT is wrong if we put them together. Then we start to see a paradigm shift, a real change in how we might approach wind generation from a traditional way that really it's kind of getting at the end of its road for development. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.